what we realised, it was a very important thing. From the start, the people who were moving to the end of Bikofia were renting the place. One sixth of the house was paid in rent to the owner, a building society or a corporation. <coughs> so it's not our property, it's not our home. I do not carry the key from work that I can take home and come to work with and open doors. No, it's their home. And when the front door bell rings, they are able to open the front door as well and let people in or out. It's designed to be their home. And it's also the relatives and the family who could do the wallpapering or discussing what kind of new TV would be necessary to, to fit in the living room. <coughs> Making it their home, I think, is an essential part of this group living facilities. <coughs> and again, elicit the behaviour of people, makes them behave in a far more natural way than we would expect them to do. I have another example of that. A nursing home doctor in the traditional home would walk every day along the wards and hear from the nurses who she would have to attend to, who need a special attention. And we don't wear uniforms, neither does the doctor. So someone would be sitting in the living room and would be addressed by the doctor and asking questions. Who are you? And then the doctor decided that perhaps we should change this routine. Change it and say, I start behaving like an ordinary family doctor. Most of the complaints are just minor issues that I you know, have to investigate and try to diagnose. So she set up in a small office and she had a white coat hanging and a stethoscope put around her neck and she had some nice plates of anatomy on the wall, things like that, and a research table. And then the nurse would say, ah, oh, Mr. So-and-so, yeah, she needs some attention by the doctor, let's make an appointment. And then you walk along to the doctor's office and the person suddenly starts behaving like we all do when we go to our family doctor with a complaint. Then suddenly I take the role of the patient and talk my complaints and I listen to the doctor what she has to tell me and get what kind of advice I might get. So yes, try to touch and try to get in touch with the, the behavioural repertoire, as I would say, of persons, of people, other people, certainly of people with dementia, and they will show you a lot more than what they might do regularly, particularly in a strange and estranging environment like the nursing home. Now, while we've talked about quality of life and a special situation, I think where we can enrich the environment of people with dementia, particularly alternative nursing homes, I would like to talk about how we as professional carers and what kind of demands we are, are expected from us. The last 20 years, quite a few worldwide approaches have been developed on care for dementia and you could actually summarize it and has been done like this under the flag of emotion oriented care. Care for the person with dementia not technically as a nurse but certainly focusing on the person with dementia itself in the whole and that requires an attitude that we should focus on, that we should help and support our nurses and other people who work with the people with dementia, physiotherapists, doctors, and anyone. We need an attitude which is person-centered and relation-centered. You bring your own person, their own strength you have as a person, into a care situation, into the relationship that you develop with people with dementia. It requires a sensitivity, an ability to listen to people, to 
try and acknowledge, try to realize what their needs are. <clears throat> it helps if you're interested in the life history of the people you meet and you work for. That can tell you a lot also about their present behavior. And it helps if you can create a warm and cozy atmosphere. Gemütlich is I think the word in German. <laughs> And it's important, and it's also important that you do have a lot of abilities in non-verbal contact, particularly if speech is affected, and that's very often the case. You need to be able to relate to people, and most of the nurses I know have something like their naturals, and still it helps regularly to do some course and training and to support that aspect of their professionality, the competences they need, or we all need actually. Of course, communicative skills, knowing how to listen <coughs> and how to pick up signals that people give us, intended or unintended. We need to try and support people with dementia in maintaining an emotional balance. <coughs> The sadness, very often, so try to help people by overcoming it and not sticking to it and going on and on and staying in this moment of sadness. And you have to be able to develop what I would call an adequate care relationship. When you care for someone with dementia, you actually enter a relationship. And it's a special relationship. There's a lot of dependency on the side of the person with dementia. Someone with dementia is dependent <coughs> on you for care, for her daily life. So there's inequality. You are not equal in that relationship and that requires your attention and your awareness of that fact that people have to rely on you. That is, I think, a very important uh, competence. And of course, you have to be able to support people in maintaining social relations. Try to encourage friendship with other people in the nursing home, for instance, but also with relatives providing an environment where people can meet and enjoy and have fun. Also, I find often that people, for instance, children of someone with dementia, particularly if the speech is affected, find it difficult to go and visit because they feel not at ease during a visiting situation. You can help and facilitate that. And that every situation is different. But that makes in essence, something to do. You could help, for instance, by having a daughter or a son making coffee, doing little things in the household that suddenly relaxes the situation instead of just, now I come visit, I sit down and chair and my God, it's another hour to go. How long will this last? So those, I think, are important aspects that we have to focus on more than just technical things of nursing. Are those not important then? Yes, of course. But I think that that is just, it always goes the same, so to speak. It's a basic skill that you as a nurse, of course, have. You know how to deal with medication, you know how to inject if that's necessary, you know how to do all those technical skills. Actually, in daily life with people with dementia, most of those skills are not very often needed, as my experience. <clears throat> but, yes, of course, it's a profession. But these competences, I think, are far more important to really support people with dementia and to improve their quality of life. You can make a difference there. I'm almost coming to an end, but well, it's not 12 o'clock yet, so... <laughs> oh, here it is, this almost forgot one. 
support in dealing with a nursing home. Even the example that I mentioned of group living or small-scale housing is still a nursing home, an artificial situation. No one, nobody of those persons chose to live with five other people in one house. I mean, it's certainly not heaven or paradise. It's just, I think, a good alternative for a large-scale ward in a nursing home. But it's still a strange situation. It's not natural. So, yes, it's an enormous challenge for people, particularly when they move to a nursing home, for them to accept the fact that they have moved and to realize that they are going to live there the rest of their life. That's quite something. You walk arm in arm, perhaps with your daughter or one of the other children, most of the time with the daughters, and then you're told, ah, oh, Mr. So-and-so, welcome here, you come and live here. Just still smiling, but <laughs> I'm sure that most people with dementia will stop smiling at that stage. It's shocking, really, to be told a thing like that. <clears throat> ah. There's some time left. I want to focus you on the work of another professor in the, in the Netherlands. Erik Scherer, who's a neuropsychologist, and he done a lot of work on movement, on pain, and also he gives us a lot of advice on how to improve quality of life. And the first things he says is we should enrich the environment, provide enough stability <coughs> for people that actually you know, a list that, that actually makes people behave, <coughs> to do something, give them room to live. And he also says, provide enough daylight. There's quite a lot of scientific evidence that old people need more light than younger people. It affects their brains, their mood, it counts for us, it counts also for people of dementia. It also helps to set your biological clock, to keep you in touch with the course of the day. And he also did a lot of interesting work on movement or exercise. And he found that there's a strong relation between movement and exercise with cognition effect and also of the biological <coughs> clock. He says it's important to go walk with people, certainly when people are affected by dementia or other brain damage. He also says it prevents falling. Falling is a very big risk in old age. It's a serious risk, but still. How can you prevent it? You could put people down and keep them down. And what I see in nursing home settings very often is that people sit down in a low chair and they have trouble, you know, sitting very deep down, getting up. And what happens on the ward, ah, I said, sit down, I'll bring you some coffee. Relax, stay there. And he says, don't. Offer your arm, help someone up and walk. When you walk and when you keep walking, you maintain your balance, you maintain the brain functions far better to keep your balance, you're feeling better. And I can tell you that. Movement, like many of you, if, if anyone's doing sports, or anyone, and it makes a lot of people feel better after you've exercised. I dance every week, and I love it, it helps me, improves my mood tremendously. So yes, also in old age, it does help. This is what my conclusion would be. And I think the main thread of my uh, presentation, please listen to and also watch, particularly if people cannot speak for themselves anymore in words, but listen to and watch for the stories the persons with dementia have to tell.